No, the iPad does not need to run Mac OS to reach its full potential. It just needs to be the very best version of iPad OS. In this iPad Pro top features video, which I fully edited on this iPad Pro with Final Cut Pro for iPad, I intertwine my conversation about the current state of this computing platform. And you might be surprised. Now, first of all, I just wanna give the iPad as a computing platform its due props, because think about this. There is a large contingent of iPad users who are using computers today only because of iPad OS and how accessible it is to them. Otherwise, they may not even use a computer at all, or if they did, it would be very cautiously. The iPad has made computing accessible, and that in and of itself is a huge accomplishment and should be lauded. Folks, this is its own computing platform on its own unique journey. But like clockwork, all the reviews came out about the new iPad Pros, and you know I could probably tell you the story in full before they even came out. The hardware is wonderful, but the software is holding it back. That's the same story we've been hearing for the past several years, and it hasn't changed this year at all. So what to do? You could either get rid of iPad OS and adopt something else, or make iPad OS better. There are a lot of problems that you could pick with iPad OS, but I think the issue really boils down to three main areas. Number one, apps have no common thread. And I'll explain what I mean as we go on in this video. Number two, there's a lack of shortcuts. And then number three, file management is still clunky at best. Okay, so this is a top features video. Let's do an unboxing of the new iPad Pro and we'll continue this conversation. All right, so we're gonna do an unboxing first. This is the 13 inch iPad Pro in space black. And it is the base model version. So that's 256 gigabytes of storage, which is actually double the amount of storage that the base iPad Pros used to come in. So that's a definite improvement. And here is what you see when you first open it up. Pretty familiar experience there. Designed by Apple in California packet. So inside this, you'll notice conspicuously missing are the stickers. Of course, we all heard Apple got rid of the Apple stickers in the box, which is gonna save on waste. I never use those stickers anyway, so what do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, you get the getting started guide. And inside you also get the 20 watt power adapter. Of course, you can use a higher wattage charger like the one that came with your MacBook for faster charging. And inside the box, you also get a color matched USB-C cable. This is just a regular USB-C charging cable. It's not Thunderbolt enabled or anything like that, but it is color matched on the ends for the first time, which is you know kind of a nice touch. All right, so we got all that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get the iPad itself unwrapped. So here it is, the space black 13 inch iPad Pro. So let's just walk through what we see. Obviously on front, dominating the front is that 13 inch OLED display. And in landscape orientation for the first time on the iPad Pro, you have your true depth camera system. So that's gonna be great for video calls because that landscape orientation will make it just a lot more natural. And you also have an antenna band, well, several antenna bands that wrap around the edges that are viewable from the front of the display. Now. At the top, you see the speaker grills, and this one has more cutouts than my M1 powered iPad Pro. There's another antenna band, and oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this is actually the one terabyte 13 inch Pro in silver. Yeah, this is gonna be my actual day-to-day -day device, uh, whereas the other one is sort of a test device. So here's the top button, which can be used to sleep or wake or invoke Siri. And then on the side, you can see the volume buttons up and down, which actually change based on orientation. And here is the inductive charger for the Apple Pencil Pro. You have a microphone here next to that antenna band. And then on the bottom, more speaker grills. So you have two speaker grills that flank each side of these antenna bands. And in the middle, of course, is the USB Type-C 
Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4 port. Okay, so back to the state of the iPad. I mentioned those three areas that contributed to the friction that makes the iPad OS experience a little less than ideal. So that very first item was apps have no common thread. You may be wondering, what do you mean by that? But think about the Mac and think about what basically every Mac app has access to, something very familiar. And that would be the menu bar, right? The menu bar is a universal concept on the Mac that most apps have access to. I look at the menu bar as sort of like a long hallway where you can traverse and quickly gain access to all these various areas of the app. And that is something that iPadOS apps just don't have. I don't think iPadOS should necessarily adopt a menu bar clone, but it needs something to help contribute to the cohesiveness of the app experience. Because right now, apps just feel like free-for-alls on iPadOS. It's like there's no sort of continuity. One app does things this way, another app does things that way, and that's fine, but the underlying fabric on macOS is that menu bar because it, it's something that's familiar. No matter what the app is, you know you can go to the menu bar to do this, 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 and that. Uh, whereas on iPadOS, every app feels like its own little mini operating system within iPadOS, and it just, I don't know, it takes extra brain cycles. It seems like it slows you down. It leads to friction. Maybe the answer isn't like copying the menu bar from Mac OS, but there definitely needs to be some sort of common link between apps that's just not there yet. So one of the biggest differences with this year's iPad Pro is how thin it is. So it went from 6.4 millimeters in the 2022 version down to 5.1 millimeters, which is an insane reduction in thickness. And it also lost a lot of weight as well, going from 1.5 pounds to just 1.28 pounds. So that reduction in weight and thickness makes for a much more portable device that's easier to hold. And because of that, it makes the Magic Keyboard that much more compelling. So the Ultra Retina XDR display is a tandem OLED, which passes light through multiple electroluminescent units to significantly improve brightness. And that makes sense because brightness has traditionally been one of the weaknesses of OLED displays. But thanks to the tandem OLED, Apple is able to maintain the same brightness from its mini LED display on the previous iPad Pro, 1600 nits for HDR and up to 1000 nits for everything else. And for the first time, there's a new nano texture glass option for the one and two terabyte models. And although the inherent disadvantages of matte displays are still present, this is probably the best matte display I've ever seen. Thankfully, the anti-glare properties of the regular iPad Pro are pretty good as well. So in this new iPad Pro, Apple for the first time launched its new M4 chip, which is based on that second generation three nanometer process, which is an approved version of the M3 chip that's cheaper to build and produces better yields. Now there's debate as to whether the M4 is an actual improvement over the M3 in IPC or instructions per clock cycle, or if the gains are related to scalable matrix extension support, which is a part of ARM v9. But if you're an iPad Pro user, you see the eye-watering single core scores there and pretty good multi-core scores there as well. If you're an iPad Pro user, it doesn't really matter because there was no M3 iPad Pro. You were coming from an M2, so regardless, you're gonna get some pretty good gains with this new iPad Pro if you're upgrading. Besides, there's more that matters than just brute force speed. For instance, now the iPad for the first time gets AV1 hardware decoding support, which gives you access to watch 8K videos in YouTube right there in Safari, which is great. There's a lot of 8K stuff going on here with these new iPad Pros and with the iPhone for that matter. So anytime I talk about 8K, I reference this YouTube video of the HomePod mini review that I did. And the reason, well, it's because I shot it with a Red V Rapture in 8K 60 frames per second HDR. And you can see when I go into the stats for nerds, you see AV1 right there. So that is what allows us to watch 8K video in Safari, thanks to AV1 support. But it doesn't just stop there. Now you get hardware acceleration for 8K H.264, H.265, ProRes, and ProRes RAW. So you can see me playing back an 8K HEVC video here. I just slapped it in a DaVinci Resolve, 
played it back and it's playing back pretty good. Shout out to Oliver X. If you too want to test out these sample videos, you can find the link here. And as I mentioned earlier during the unboxing for the first time, you get 256 gigabytes of storage on the base configuration, which is double the 128 gigabytes of storage on previous base config. Now, the second thing in iPad OS that leads or contributes to friction is keyboard shortcuts or the lack thereof. Like obviously apps have keyboard shortcuts. You hold command, you get the list of keyboard shortcuts. That's cool, but there aren't nearly enough shortcuts in the apps that I like to use. For instance, Final Cut Pro is a wonderful example of how bad this is right now, because like the ability to copy and paste effects from one clip to another clip, something that video editors do all the time. You can't do that with a keyboard shortcut in Final Cut Pro for iPad. You have to meticulously go in, copy an effect, and then paste it on each clip, which is it just blows your mind how slow and how clunky that is. It, it makes editing an absolute chore on the iPad with Final Cut Pro. But I want to take it one step further. iPad OS needs the ability to set custom keyboard shortcuts, uh, just like you can in Mac OS. That would make everything so much better, more customized. I can go in and set the shortcuts that I want if they're missing and create my own shortcuts. Now, again, on Mac OS, that relies on the menu bar in order to do that. So again, there is that, that lack of that common thread between applications, but it is one glaring omission that contributes heavily to friction and it just slows you down. It feels like you're running through water and it's not a very fun experience. For the first time, the iPad Pro gets a landscape oriented camera and i don't know about you guys but that is a feature that i have been wanting and clamoring for for years it's always been so awkward to try to look at the camera when it's to the left or to the right side of the display well now the camera rests right at the top of the display when in landscape mode just like it would with a, a traditional laptop and thanks to that you can now hold the device like this without having to worry about blocking the camera and there's also the adaptive True Tone flash on the rear. You can see that flash there with the ambient light sensor next to it. And that helps to adjust the flash. But the cool thing about this adaptive flash is that when you use the scanning feature within the Photos app, the adaptive flash provides better quality, more reliable scans, even when there's shadows on the paper that you're scanning the adaptive flash can compensate for that and give you a nice high quality scan. So that's a welcome new addition to these new iPad Pros. Speaking of welcome new additions, you now have battery health for the very first time on the iPad, starting with this new iPad Pro and the new iPad Air. Super handy for keeping an eye on your battery status. Now, if you're going to purchase an iPad Pro, in my opinion, the Magic Keyboard is a must. And this new Magic Keyboard has been redesigned to be better in a lot of ways. So the most obvious thing, much bigger trackpad, as you can see there. And just like on our laptops, this is a capacitive trackpad with no moving parts. So it's significantly quieter than the previous generation Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. And that larger trackpad yields a larger wrist rest area and that inside surface is made out of aluminum, which is far nicer to type on compared to that rubbery plastic of the previous version. Now you also get a function row, which is super nice, more viewing angles, and Apple got rid of the little rubber cover on the hinge as well, which seemed to attract a lot of dirt and grime. The third iPad OS item that contributes to friction is file management. Now the files app is a lot better than it has been in the past. It's improved, but it still has a long way to go. For instance, I can't do a quick look on some of the HEVC videos that I shot with my Sony FX30, which is just, it's bonkers to me. So I, I do a quick look and it's just nothing. It's just blank. Um, so that in and of itself slows me down because I can't preview stuff quickly within the, the uh, files app. So I have to actually import it into an app in order just to view, you know, a preview of the clip, which slows you down tremendously. Apple, let us see where we're storing our stuff. For instance, when I add uh, clips to a Final Cut Pro project, 
there's just no way to go out and see where those clips are being referenced from. It's just, it's just out there somewhere on the iPad OS file system that's inaccessible to normal users. The inability to reference media back to its storage location is just, again, it's something that slows you down. It's something that contributes to the clunkiness and just feeling like you're, you don't have control basically. And Apple launched the Apple Pencil Pro with significant enhancements over the second generation Apple Pencil. If you have the iPad Pro or the iPad Air, I would definitely recommend it because it brings a lot to the table. So one thing that I like that isn't new is hover support. I didn't have that on my M1 iPad, but M2 iPads and higher get hover support. So basically you could just hover over the screen and it will give you a preview of what to expect. But not just that, now you get shadow effects as well. So you see that little shadow right under? That shadow represents whatever tool you're using. So if you're using a fountain pen, you'll see a, a fountain pen shadow. And no matter how you orient the pencil, it gives you a corresponding shadow. But not just that, it also works with the gyroscope to orient the shadow based on the way you're rotating the Apple Pencil, which is crazy, right? The attention to detail is insane. But barrel roll isn't just for the looks, it actually has function. So when you rotate, you can get different types of weight in your stroke. For instance, if you're using a highlighter and rotate it to the side, you get thicker lines, just like an actual real life highlighter. So you can see that it changed as I rotate using that barrel roll. But that's not the only new function, of course, in the Apple Pencil Pro. You get haptics and they are fairly prominent. You can feel them when you double tap or when you use the new squeeze gesture. And that squeeze gesture reveals a palette or you can configure it to do a lot of other things, even launch shortcuts. So this Apple Pencil is a nice upgrade over the second generation. If you're a digital artist, I can see it potentially speeding up your workflow. So this is going pretty much how we expected it to go. Like the hardware is amazing. We all knew that going into it and the software is still lagging behind a bit. But that all being said, I think iPad OS has made significant strides to be not only a better operating system, but one that can stand on its own without having to feel like something needs to replace it. I think iPad OS is a very good OS, no question. Um, there's tons of people that use it every day. It's a great OS that still needs to mature. It's a relatively young OS um, as far as being separate from iOS is concerned. For instance, I think things like Stage Manager have improved the experience a whole lot. Like multitasking feels like real multitasking on the iPad now, but it's the lack of continuity and it's like the convenience features, the, the little things that make or break the experience for a lot of people. And that's what iPad OS really needs to hunker down on and just address all these little things that add up. It's like a million paper cuts and it makes it almost unusable in certain situations. For instance, I edited this whole video within Final Cut Pro for iPad and it, it was not easy at all. It, it took me way longer than it should have because there's so much manual work that I'm used to basically hitting a few keyboard shortcuts on the Mac version and being done with it. For instance, you cannot create a compound clip in Final Cut Pro for iPad. You can't copy and paste effects. So those two things combined really make the experience of editing anything but the most basic of videos. And this video isn't complicated, but it makes editing anything but the most basic of videos an absolute chore. Now, all that being said, I do really appreciate the touch first mentality that Apple went with with Final Cut Pro. Unlike DaVinci Resolve, which is basically just a port of the desktop version, Final Cut Pro feels like it was made for touch first, actually. Now, I know I sound like probably over the top, but I don't know. I just love the iPad Pro form factor. It's fun to use. You can see the potential but it's not being realized entirely. And I just wish Apple would just do it and just, just like address all these little things in once and for all and bring us the experience that we know these things are capable of. Uh, that's all we want and appreciate 
all you guys that are working hard on this stuff behind the scenes. Um, like I said, this was not a, um, a disparaging video. If anything, it's an encouraging video because I think iPad and iPad OS is awesome. And I am excited for the future of iPad for sure. What do you guys think about the new iPad Pro? Let me know down below in the comments section and just let me know what you think about everything I said here. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'll have much more iPad content coming in the future. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.